Representative Mary Kiffmeyer joins me now to talk about her moving the constitutional amendment forward next session. Thanks for joining us today. Good to be with you. Representative Kiffmeyer, the governor has spoken. He vetoed the bill last session, so you are, again, are leading the effort to bring it forth in 2012 as a constitutional amendment. Why take the issue to the voters? Well, generally speaking, when you understand that it's the voters' election, that's the day when the people govern. So on election, you hear about government of the people buying for them, when on election day, it's their day. And what better thing for them to be able to vote on the constitutional men for photo ID because it's for all of the voters on election day. And since uh, about 85% of the Minnesota people do support a requirement of photo ID, matter of fact, the largest support amongst the young people, and also amongst women. That's where the heaviest uh, base of support is, but it never drops below 70%. So I think the voters have really shown that they want photo ID. And since the governor vetoed and has been insistent that he's not going to do photo ID, uh, then I think it's also just a really good thing to let the people have their say, have their voice on something that pertains to their very own election, something that they experience when they go to vote. And we asked the governor that question today, and we'll air his response a bit later in this program, but he essentially said that he might support the bill if there's broad bipartisan support. What do you think might have to happen <laughs> to get this broad bipartisan support. You know, what's amazing is that even 60% of the, in the survey, 60% of the Democrats support photo ID. So I think in the broadest term and the best term of broad bipartisan support, that should include the people, the Democrat people out there who are not legislators, but have an opinion about this and a very, very strong base of support and a very bipartisan, independents, Republicans, and Democrats, uh, all well mixed in all age groups, strongly support photo ID. But the governor has decided to define last I know, that bipartisan support only means legislators. And in the House, we did have two Democrats voting for the bill. In the Senate, there weren't any of the Democrats who voted for the photo ID bill, which is really interesting when you consider the broad base of public support amongst Democrats for photo ID. Now, you once held the office of Secretary of State. What are some of the concerns that stem from your time in that office that motivate you to try to pass this bill? Well, actually, my interest and desire for photo ID is way before being Secretary of State. I was an election judge for 11 years, and I read the election law through several times instead of Reader's Digest when things were slow. One of those weird people who, <laughs> my dad was a tax preparer, so I am my father's daughter. But as I read through that and as I experienced working in the polling place on election day, way back to then, I said, why not an ID? Uh, Anderson, with an O-N, with an E-N. Is that William, Bill, Will? Uh, or W with Jim, and you go by your, I mean, just show me your ID, and I think we can help those lines go faster. But I was not allowed as an election judge to ask for the ID unless I really questioned things, and it was just a different time, but I always thought, so my roots in that is way beyond that. And matter of fact, the U.S. Supreme Court and the other courts who have upheld the photo ID in other states, such as Georgia, um, and the U.S. Supreme Court, which have upheld it as well, say that you don't need um, the purpose of the photo ID to deter fraud, mm -hmm. to detect fraud, and most importantly, to increase public confidence and uh, are sufficient uh, reasoning to implement a photo ID legislation as long as you give them free to those who cannot afford them, which my bill would have given as well as other states do. But for me, the increase in public confidence, this is the voters that this is their election day, to increase their confidence in the process they're participating in is the biggest driver for me in photo ID. So what's more important in your opinion? High voter turnout, some say that would diminish, and Minnesota is obviously nationally recognized for its high voter turnout. Is the high voter turnout, in your opinion, a greater value than preventing fraudulent voting? I don't think that's a proper way to phrase it. Um, I remember one of the DFL representatives said to me, well, you Republicans really care about integrity, but us Democrats, we really care about access. And I said, you know, you don't quite have that right. We care about the integrity of the election with the access. So it's putting those two together, both access and integrity. Um, both of those coming together in the implementation of our election laws. And I think it's interesting that in Georgia, uh, as a matter of fact, in Indiana, that was the test case that went to the U.S. Supreme Court, their voter turnout increased. And because they have party registration, what was interesting to note is increased most amongst the Democrat voters. 
And so this whole notion that it depresses voter turnout is absolutely not true. I believe when you increase the integrity of elections and you increase public confidence, you will increase that. Now, there is a difference between a gubernatorial year voter turnout and a presidential year. But in Indiana, they have a few years now to go by, and it has overall, in a very positive way, by one or two percentage points, has increased the voter turnout. In Wisconsin, with the recall election, voters were required to present an ID. However, they were able to vote even if they didn't have a photo ID with them. Did you see any hiccups in the system? I haven't heard a word. And that always tells you uh, if you haven't heard a word. Now, I've read the articles, uh, read through them the other night, kind of looking for issues or things, but it wasn't there when you consider the fact that it was the first implementation of the new photo ID requirement and went off very smoothly. I think we greatly underestimate our voters, that they are quite competent and quite capable and, matter of fact, quite eager to be able to show their ID, this is who I am, and uh, especially even new citizens, when they're voting for the first time, they're like, please ask for my ID. I want to show you I'm a U.S. citizen and I, I get to vote and this is such a wonderful thing. And so I think we underestimate the voters and their willingness and even eagerness in many cases to participate. And on the House floor, Representative Marion Green brought up in particular absentee voting and mm -hmm. how can one ensure that that person in exactly yeah. so what is your response to that well issue? it's an equivalency issue realizing that our soldiers or other people that are doing business can't be there in the polling place on election day uh, they can go vote in person an absentee ballot and fulfill the requirement there but what we also required in the bill was on the absentee ballot application we already have a witness signature which is similar uh, as far as practicable implementation of that verification. And then the other thing is that we'll be collecting their driver's license number or ID number so that we can do the same verifications to show that they're not on a felon list, uh, whatever those things are, that we can you know, check with the DPS that it's a valid license and all that. So on the absentee voting, a matter of fact, on absentee voting, you have a little more time to process the application and do some of those things. And then realizing with the um, uh, implementation of this, I think we've uh, put together a well thought out bill. And again, it's been modeled after Indiana, which has already been upheld in the U.S. Supreme Court as constitutional and in Georgia as well. And what's uh, interesting about Georgia, they're a state that has to have pre-clearance to change their election law from the Department of Justice, which they received and later the same policy was upheld in the court as well. Okay. So I think we're in a good place. We're out of time, unfortunately, but we'll track your legislation next session when it's introduced. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Glad to be with you. Thank you.